Today I want to take a look at how to filter Power Apps using multiple choice fields. Now, multiple choice fields in SharePoint are kind of unique because we have multiple values in a single cell. Here we're looking at a document library with a number of test documents uploaded, and we have a field called multi-choice. The field itself, multi-choice, more library settings, is all default choice one, two, three that we get with the SharePoint product out of the box. And importantly, this is set to checkbox with allow multiple. What that means is that a user could pick all of them, none of them, or some mixture of checkboxes and it creates a concatenated multi-value cell. So when we're looking at our document library view, a single row, single column might have multiple values. Here we can see all three are selected. Here we have choice two and three. Here it's choice one and three. So the values can vary. Within that, is a JSON notation and comma separated strings that provide both the display value and any underlying separators. So the way SharePoint stores that is kind of particular in the JSON formatting. And we can use it for filtering by doing things like show me only choice one, and you'll get matches that contain, not equals, but contains. And this is an interesting filter because a lot of the filtering in SharePoint Online is going to be exact match equals. But in this case, the logic is more of contains. So if we say choice one, we're going to end up with things like this that have choice one, two, and three, or choice one and three. So it's a contains logic when we're applying filtering. If we wanted to bring that into the Power Apps world, how would we go about doing it? The app on start can populate a collection of the data based on our data connection. So here I have a connection to the document library for documents. And in the on start of the app, we are clearing a collection and we're feeding in documents. Documents is, of course, the name of the SharePoint data connection. So that, that's our external connection reference that we established over here on the uh, left-hand side. So documents is the name of our connection. In the on start, we want to take that connection and save it into a collection called COL documents. And collections provide the ability to store rows and columns of data and memory. So when the application starts, it essentially is loading the, the full set of information. And that works well in moderate size libraries. There's some performance considerations if you have you know, thousands and tens of thousands of files, you may need a different technique. But for this demo purpose, we bring the entire thing into the collection. Cool. And here we have a display. And this table is going to display the output, the gallery of those matching items. And our goal is to allow people to multi-select and then search. So we're looking for a user experience with two steps. The first step is a multi-select of one or more terms and then clicking a search icon to populate the matching results in the table at the bottom. Now just to see that demo working in full, if we pick out choice number one and click our search icon, we're going to get items where choice one is contained. So it's somewhere within the collection. Okay, cool. Choice one, search, and we have six total items. That is our matching logic of how many items come back. We can take that, we can modify it, and maybe say, well, give me things that are choice one and two. Okay, and the contains logic is going to extend, and now we find anything that was a choice one or a choice two. So this is a contains or logic, and it actually increases the count. So now we're at 11. So this is or logic that widens the number of results, and now we're looking at 11 because we put in more criteria. All right, and if we come back and we take away both of those and maybe pick out choice three and do a search, we get six items. There it is with contains choice three. I have a few different items coming through there. Cool, cool, cool. All right, yes, good deal. So that's kind of the experience we're trying to create in Power Apps. And the way that we get there, well, the field itself is a combo box drop down control. And we can see that over here as it is CB combo box. And I prefixed it with letters CB underscore just to make it easier to find when we're navigating the UI. And for the items property, we are providing that. 
And for the items property of the combo box, we're providing the choices of the SharePoint data connection and the multi-choice field. So this is the connection, this is the field, and of course choices is the, the beginning. So that's kind of the, the layout of how we do the data connections. And we can go ahead and do a search and see what we have together here. Clear collection for all value and multi-choice. This is our search button click. And it's doing a couple of different things. We'll break them down one at a time. The very first one is that it clears out anything old, essentially emptying the collection. Fair enough. The next one is for all selected item and CB choices. This is our combo box of different choices. So did the user select one, two, three items? How many loops do we want to create? That's our primary loop. Now inside of the loop, we are going to collect into the collection of documents. We're going to append basically. And then we'll switch colors here to blue for the filter. This filter is looking at the external data connection of documents, right? The data connection is named documents over to the SP list. And we're looking for anywhere that it has one of the values of the multi-choice that we've provided. And that's coming from the selected items, the for all. So the token in green of the current value comes from the for all, and that's how they feed together. So what we're doing is we're emptying the collection and then we're appending anything that matches from the data source. So again, if you check more criteria, you're gonna end up with more matches. Maybe you match one item, maybe you match five items. The more of the multi-choice we select, the higher number of matches and the higher number of rows we're going to return. But this is kind of an interesting way of tackling the problem. It handles it with the for all collect and clear collect functions and filter is going against the data connection. And all of that together gives us a search experience we're looking for where a user can come in and provide a multi-choice value in search and come back with their matching items. And again, just given that multi-choice fields behave a little bit differently, it's not as easy as an exact match with text the way we would see with filtering on a single text column or even a numeric column with an exact equals. The contains logic of multi-choice is going to behave differently, so you probably want to look at a collection and using the collect function to go ahead and append, and that way you can collect more items based on more matching from the multi-choice field. Thanks for watching.